Okay, so the great thing about multiplying by decimals is it's exactly the same as multiplying whole numbers. Nothing changes except for where the decimal is in your answer. There's going to be a decimal in our answer. So again, we look at our numbers. We see this has three digits. This has two digits. So we always want to put the number with the most digits on the top, even if it's smaller or bigger. It doesn't really matter. Um, again, kids, remember I'm teaching you to think money. So this is $7.28 and this is $3.60. Just We do that just to kind of make decimals a little bit easier. So we're going to put the one with the most digits. Now, we're used to with adding and subtracting decimals to line up our decimals. But we don't do that when we multiply. Okay, so that's kind of in fourth and or actually fifth grade. That's where we have to remember, okay, there's certain rules for certain things. And with decimals, multiplying decimals, we don't want to line them up. Now, sometimes they do naturally line up on their own, but we don't purposely do it. So we almost look at this number like it's just 36. Where would we put that if it was 36? Well, we'd put it right here, okay? But we're gonna go ahead and add our decimal because we're gonna need that for our answer, okay? So again, same multiplication. We're gonna start over here in our first column. Six times eight is 48, so we're gonna write the eight and we're gonna carry the four. We have six times two is 12, plus four is 16, so we're gonna put our six. We're gonna carry our one. Six times seven is 42, plus one is 43. We write our 43. We don't have any numbers left, so we know that we're finished with our six. We're gonna cross it off. That's when we add our zero placeholder, and then we cross off the numbers that we've carried. Okay, we're now in the second column. Remember, if you forget your zero placeholder, it's okay. You just have to remember that when you multiply by the second line right here, this digit, this answer, whatever this answer is, has to go underneath that number. So when we get to three digit, that answer is going to go under your this digit, the third digit, okay? So if you can remember that, if you accidentally forget your zero placeholder, it's still going to be okay, all right? So we have 3 times 8 is 24, so we're going to write our 4, and we're going to carry our 2. We have 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. We put our 8. There's nothing to carry. We have 3 times 7 is 21. Make sure you keep your columns really straight. This is really important when you guys are learning to multiply with, with triple and, and double digits. Make sure everything's lined up perfectly. And then we're just adding. Eight plus zero is eight. Six plus four is 10. Carry our one. Eight plus one is nine plus three is 12. Put our two, carry our one. Four plus one plus one is six. And two plus nothing is two. Now, <clears throat> if we didn't have decimals up here, our answer would be done and we put our comma, but this is what changes our answer. So you have to come up to the equation and you see that we have two place values. We have the tenths and the hundredths place that are after the decimal. So there's two digits that fall after the decimal, so we're gonna put a little two. We're gonna look at this number. There's one digit, we have a tenths place after the decimal, so we're gonna put a little one. And you're gonna add these numbers together and that's what tells you how many times you're moving your decimal back. Okay, so remember, if this wasn't money and we were thinking, okay, we have a little over seven groups and we have a little over three groups, so if we're multiplying seven times three, our answer is going to be, a it's going to be 21, right? But this is a little bit more than seven and this is a little bit more than three, so if seven times three is 21, our answer is going to be a little bit more than 21 after we move our decimal. Well, if we didn't put our decimal and this answer was 26,208, that wouldn't make sense, right? I mean, seven, seven groups of three is not going to give us 26,000, right? So we know there's going to have to be a decimal in our answer. So we come back over here. We've got two digits and a digit here. Some teachers teach you to circle these or put a box around them. Just whatever works best for your, how you think is great. But I'm going to move my decimal back three times, okay? Now, where is my decimal right now? Okay, I know you guys know, because you would say, at the end, yes, it's at the end. Anytime there's not a decimal, don't say, oh, there's not a decimal in that number. Yes, there is, there's always a decimal. If there's not, it's always at the end, because right now, this is a whole number, okay? So we've got our decimal. <clears throat> We're gonna move it back three times. One, two, three. We're gonna rewrite this number without the little Humpty Dump things over here. <laughs> And then we're gonna look at it and say, okay, is this reasonable? So this number is 26 and 208 thousandths. 
Or if we looked at it as money, we would say $26 and 21 cents because that eight would round our zero. Remember how we learned to round? If we wanted to round to the penny, we'd underline the penny, we'd circle our eight. Does eight change the zero? Yes, okay? So if we rounded this and turned it into money, it'd be $26 and 21 cents. Well, is that reasonable? Well, we know it is because seven times three was 21. And we know it's gonna be a little bit more than 21 because we've got some change here and some change here that we're multiplying together. So that's a reasonable answer.